I have not been Ryan Pohl's biggest fan in his time here. But I look at what he's done this offseason. If you asked me this a week and a half ago, I would have said he's done nothing. What's there to do? He's done. Like, I mean, you got Ryan Bates and a running back. Great. Awesome. But what he did last week with going and getting a real center, you know, not, not a really good one. But I'll tell you what, you put him in, Luke, you put Coleman Shelton's tape next to Lucas Patrick's, you feel like you just got an awesome football player. He's not an awesome football player. He's an adequate football player, but that's how how bad the center position has been. So that helps. And the Keenan Allen trade to me is it's a huge boost for helping a rookie quarterback. Like he's probably one of the receivers who age aside can be the biggest help to a rookie quarterback. The way that he works the middle field, the way that he wins routes, the knowledge he has to be doing what he's doing at his age right now. He has to be such a strong asset to help him develop a rookie, helping young receivers get better. There's so much, even a guy like DJ Moore can learn from Keenan Allen, that that is such a strong addition to me. As much as it sucks that he's about to be 32 and only on one year left on his contract, and you're going to have to play out that whole, how much do we pay a 32 going on 33-year-old receiver after this year? I think even if it's a one-year thing, it should be worth it for the benefit that you get of him working with your rookie. Um, so I, I really do think I look at what Poles has done to this point, where Poles comes from in Kansas City, of having this knowledge of, you know, seeing Andy Reid do this with quarterbacks. and. Ian Cunningham coming from Philadelphia. That's got to help some too. I think I don't think Hurts is exactly the model of what you want, but you look at what they did with adding A.J. Brown, adding Devonta Smith, that monster O-line they have of helping develop the young passer. And then you look at Kevin Warren. His roots go back to the greatest show on turf, Rams. The guy knows a thing or two about building an offense himself. So... There's a lot in that building right now to like, and that's been that way, but they're actually starting to show us a reason to believe in that, which is something that I'm 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 willing to listen to right now. I probably wouldn't have been six months ago, but right now I feel like they they have shown enough that I'm saying this feels right. This feels like it's it's going in the right direction for the first time in a while. Yeah, and I think that's a feeling that as a Bears fan is odd to us, right? Because I mean, the, the idea of football in Chicago has always been run the football, play good defense, you know, and, and the NFL changed and the Bears were kind of behind. That. And now you're sitting in the position of having two very good man beating wide receivers, a good tight end in Cole Komet, a line with some flexibility. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of good things to, to write about with, with the flexibility of being able to move guys around on that offensive line. Now, a good runner in Swift. And honestly, I love the running back room between Herbert on a one year, you know, prove it next year is his last mm-hmm. contract year. And then Roshan Johnson, who we saw some spurts. We saw a guy who runs really, really hard and can get those, you know, extra one to two yards, carry some guys across the the first down lines and into the end. It's there's a lot going on. And then you start to get to this defense that we saw a lot of good things at the end of the year. Um, and I think they're still building, they're still getting to that point on the defense where they're comfortable, where they can be in that top 10, top five and sniff that. But, and I think that that's why it's so odd as a Bears fan to sit here and feel somewhat comfortable because I think that in a lot of ways, it's been a lot of like in between, right? It's, it's not a future. It's we have this spurt of seasons to win the Super Bowl, not like, and what you hope is, it's that Caleb's generational, and that quarterback becomes like your Patrick Mahomes, where you always have a shot. The first couple of years, you're going to be able to build some talent around him because of the quarterback rookie deal. But, man, it's exciting. One of the problems that will be addressed with the nine pick, but one of Demarcus Walker, Tyler Scott will be a starter for us. I honestly think they're probably going defense somewhere in the first round. Um, so Demarcus Walker, I think is a fine player. I don't know if you necessarily want him as a starter, but as like a number three edge rusher, I think he's just fine. 
Um, and I, I kind of expect right now, I'm thinking that they're targeting an edge rusher in the first round. I think it's going to be in a trade down from nine. But um, and then with Tyler Scott, one, he's your wide receiver three in a tight end heavy offense now. So your number three receiver is what going to see maybe 40 percent of the snaps in that 40 to 50 percent of the snaps. And two, if you trade down from nine, I would bet that they're aiming to pick up a second round pick so they can go get a receiver. A guy like Keon Coleman or uh, Xavier Leggett or uh, uh, Javon Bullard, a guy who can be a more reliable number three receiver than what you probably are getting from Tyler Scott. Um, so that that would be my understanding of what I think their plan is looking like between those two positions. Um, and then we have the NFL GM. Sounds like you guys aren't fans of Caleb. Um, I'm a big fan of Caleb, my friend. But uh, – Besides Caleb, do you guys feel like the front office has done enough for Caleb to succeed? O-line good enough, wide receivers good enough, coaching staff. Um, what do you think about this one, Juice? I like the first two. I like the offensive line. I think there's a lot of versatility within that that unit. I like Keenan Allen. I obviously like DJ Moore. I think that they're, like you said, they're going to go out and add to, to get more playmakers within the draft if it's not a second-round pick. That last one's what I worry about. I worry that Eberflus is not smart and is a defensive guy. And they're putting a lot on Shane Waldron, man. And that's something that I I don't know enough to feel comfortable about the coaching staff side of it in terms of the coordinator, what Shane likes to do. You say it's a, it's a heavy tight end offense. I know that, you know, he did some great things with Geno Smith. But to me, it's all about development. and you got to nurture this kid's talent or it's just not going to matter. I said it earlier on in the show. All these guys who come out are talented. They play division one college football. That's a, an echelon within their, themselves there. Caleb has great talent. It, now it's about what the bears do to make sure he maximizes his own talent. And the bears have never developed a quarterback and the bears have have no experience with doing this, but you know who does their front office? Ryan Poles does. Yeah, he was in, me. and I feel pretty confident. And Ian Cunningham as well. I feel confident that they know what they're looking at, but it's there's a lot of pressure on Shane. I, I I think that it's it's a tough situation too because they got to win, right? And it's time to win is now. Like there's no. There's no training wheels like Bryce Young last year. It's it's Caleb comes into a Ferrari, go drive it. What's your realistic expectation for Caleb for you to feel confident and excited uh, for him being the franchise quarterback for the Bears? Is it win stats? What do you like to see from him? Or what would you like to see from him? As far as like in the NFL, what I'd like to see from him, I think it's gonna be a pretty run heavy offense, if I'm being honest that's really going to make his life not that difficult. It's stats wins. I, I don't really put too much weight on either. Obviously stats to me, stats are a product of the tape. It is a way to put the tape on paper, right? To me, I want to see it on the tape. I want to see the process be quick, be efficient, and make sense that that's all that that's all it comes down to to me how is his process does it make sense is he doing it efficiently and if if he does does those three things in his process i feel really good about his chances because he has all the physical talent that you could dream of yeah I like that and, and to answer it myself i i think it's it's just growth too it's looking it's it's outlining this season into quarters I hate to go Lovey Smith on you, but I'm going to outlining it into quarters. And I want to see him by the fourth quarter of this season, picking up concepts that we've, we haven't seen, you know, early on run, run the football, do things that, you know, result in wins. Cause they're going to be able to lean on that defense. I think a little bit and win some yeah. games kind of ugly early, but I think like going into the back half of the season, like I want to see 
new concepts. I want to see things being drawn up by from Shane Waldron too that are Caleb Williams specific to make sure that they're utilizing his talents. But break it out into quarters, go all Lovey Smith on me. And by the fourth quarter, I want to see I want to see that development. I want to see him getting better. And yeah. realistically, I think that that's that's possible. Look at what's around him. I think they could be really fun next year. They they won seven games last year with not a lot. And they've added a decent amount on offense in this last couple of weeks. And they're only adding to a defense in terms of you know, probably the draft a little bit. And they're probably adding a little bit of more that your look and schemes and things like that. And players, you know, coming together another year within the system is going to help. Yeah, I think that that defense, the sky's the limit. And then with your offense, too, there's a lot more playmaking ability on it now opposed to last year where it was kind of Justin Fields running around and hoping he could find DJ Moore and Cole Komet. It, there's, there's a lot more to this puzzle now that I hope we just start seeing some development. I, I want to stress just how difficult it will be for – defenses to effectively cover the field when the bears are in 12 personnel. So two tight end personnel with Keenan Allen and DJ Moore out there at the same time. Mm-hmm. And Gerald Everett being your second tight end, who's a great receiving threat. Yeah. You really uh, like Jared, huh? Yeah. I mean, I, he's not going to blow anyone's socks off as a blocker, but he's, I, I mean, his highlights probably won't even be that great, but he, Linebacker can't cover them. It's good. To, yeah, it's, it's as simple as that. And when you're getting heavy, they want to match heavy. Mm-hmm. And that's good to see, like especially with a rookie quarterback too. Tight ends, quarterback's best friend. You know, yeah. being able to find a guy like that. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad I got that out of you. I didn't. I wanted your opinion on Gerald Everett because I haven't been on here for a while. Yeah, I mean, he's not. He, he's not the. You're not, you're not going to feel like he's this incredible tight end. You're going to feel like he's, this guy's just, how is he getting, why, why is the matchup, the defense, why are they giving this guy to him? You know, they're going to say, why would they put this guy on him? He's not fast enough because you can generate it with a player like him. Yeah. You have no choice. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. And another comment from Jeremy. If they trade down with the ninth pick, should they pick wide receiver, defensive end, center, or defensive tackle, wherever it is, 16 to 20s? And yeah, I think that 16 to 20 range is where you're going to see them target it. Personally, if I were them, I'd pick A.D. Mitchell, wide receiver out of Texas, as long as he's there. Um, but that's not what I expect. I expect them to pick, if Jared Verse is on the board, I think they're taking Jared Verse. If not, maybe it's Lay to Latu. Or you could see Matt Eberflus go get his his three technique in a uh, Johnny Newton out of Illinois or uh, Byron Murphy, uh, Texas, or I keep saying this. I love Chris Jenkins out of Michigan. No one else thinks he's a first round pick except for me. So I might just be crazy, but I, I still think the guy's a first round pick. So maybe, maybe that's a guy who does sneak into the first round and that's a guy they target as a three tech as well. Um, But I don't think you're going to see them do center there. I think the only way they would on center in the first round is if they had a glaring need there. Coleman Shelton fixes that. I think you're going to see them go go after a guy like uh, Bo Limmer or Hunter Norzad in the later round, mid to like third to fifth round, um, as a guy who they can have develop for a year. And that and both those guys have some guard versatility too, so they could you're not worried about holding them on your active roster as a backup center because they're you look around the league, there aren't many backup centers on rosters. It's usually a guard who can play center um, or a center who can play guard. You need that versatility, but I, I don't think uh center is even going to be in the equation in the first round. Do you, do you think there's any scenario where they keep nine? Where they keep what? Where they keep nine and, and take a player at nine. <laughs> It's a trick question. Um, man. I don't like, know is, there, is there a name? I, probably the better question. Is there a name? If it's there, you're you're running to the board. Within realistic names. I don't know if they can. Yeah. Like, I want them to. If neighbor Malik Neighbors is there, 
it, and Marvin Harrison's not getting there, but if Marvin Harrison right. or Romo Odunze are there, like it, so Odunze or Neighbors are the names, right? Those are who everyone wants. Those, those are what the dream is falls to nine. But I, if the Bears want to fill their needed edge rusher as well, they just can't. They can't take a guy at nine. Right. You're not going to get a, a a starting caliber edge rusher in the second or third round, or because then if you don't trade down from nine, you don't pick again until seventy five. You're not getting a good edge rusher at seventy five. The odds of getting a good edge edge rusher outside the first round are so slim. Like it's just these guys, these guys who are really good edge rushers, they're freaky athletes, and they get drafted on freaky athleticism, mm-hmm. right? They get drafted in the first round because of their traits. Their traits don't last till the third round. Yeah, it's just, man, it sucks, right? You really wish that you still had a, a second round pick. Yeah. Man, you would you would love to sprint up there and take something. Well, you know, and that's just... the thing. You you look around the league, you see tons of instances of second round wide receivers becoming awesome. You got AJ Brown, you got DK yeah. Metcalf, you got uh George Pickens, you've got uh Devontae Adams was like a fourth round pick. Like you can find a lot of examples of really successful receivers in the second round. You can't find many at edge rusher. Like Max Crosby is one of the only guys outside the first round who's really been a dude, you know. Yeah, like outside of that, it's you look at the Boses, both first right, both top ten picks. You look at Khalil Mack, top ten pick. You look at uh, even a Rashawn Gary up in Green Bay, first round pick. Daniil Hunter was one who who, who was a later pick, uh, but he he was a development project. He took some time to become that. Um, so I don't think that you can rely on trying to find an impactful edge rusher for this season anywhere except for the first round. Yeah. I mean, the Bears are in a good spot. They're just rooting for quarterbacks to go real early, yeah. right after Caleb, right? I mean, yeah. you're hoping you see as many as you can. Um, but, yeah, no, I think I, I think NFL GM puts it right. I'm just going to add this one in. The draft is going to be exciting. I can't, can't wait, especially the first five picks, anything can happen. Yeah. <laughs>